Hello everyone. So today we're going to look at the March 2025 Grade 11 Physical Sciences questions. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the Newton's laws and um, vectors and scalars. Okay, so let's look at the questions. Uh, question 1.1 says the statements below refer to vector and scalar quantities. Number one, a vector has a magnitude and direction while a scalar has magnitude only. So we know this to be true from grade 10. Point number two, a scalar quantity can always be added to a vector quantity. Now, this statement is not true. We can't always add a scalar quantity to a vector quantity. That is not true. And statement three, force is an example of a vector quantity while the change in position is an example of a scalar quantity. We know from grade 10 that the change in position is x, or if you want, delta x. This is not true. It's not a scalar quantity. So from these three statements, only the first statement is actually true. So which of the following are true? The answer there is A. Um, let's look at the next one. Two forces FA and FB act at a point O as shown. Which one of the following forces correctly represents the direction of the resultant of these two forces? So it's important for us to remember that if ever you have two forces and these two forces will produce a resultant, that the resultant will be in the quadrant between the two forces. So the resultant for FA and FB will be um, here. Yeah. So the answer there is A. Okay, 1.3. So question 1.3 says, a force of magnitude F acts on a block at an angle theta to the horizontal, as shown in the diagram below. The block initially at rest on a flat frictionless surface accelerates uniformly. The angle theta is now half. How will the normal force and net horizontal force acting on the block change? So to understand this, we should start with our free body diagram. So we have a dot. We have the, for the normal force pointing up. We have gravity pointing down. We also have the horizontal component of the force applied pointing to the left and the vertical pointing down. Now, since the forces, um, since the block is not moving up or down, the forces in the vertical direction of, will, will cancel. Or in other words, they are equal to each other. So we can make a statement saying that Fn is equal to Fy plus Fg. Now, since Fg is not changing, the normal force is going to be directly dependent on Fy. We can work out Fy using a formula. So Fy is equal to F times sine theta. And that tells us that sine theta, since the F is not changing, sine theta is going to directly affect Fy. So if we want to figure out what's happening or what's going to happen to sine theta as the angle halves, we can think of the, the function of sine theta. So this means the angle is going to be acute. And we can assume the angle, say, suppose the angle is 60 degrees. If I halve that angle, maybe to now 30 degrees, the value for sine theta is going to decrease. So in other words, if I decrease theta, sine theta is going to decrease. And if sine theta decreases, it means that Fy is going to decrease. If Fy decreases, it means that Fn is going to decrease. So if we look at our table, the option with Fn decreasing is B and D. So we now need to look at the horizontal force. Now, if we think of our horizontal force, we know that Fx is equal to F cos theta, which tells us that 
um, the horizontal component is directly dependent on cos theta since the, the force is constant. So we can figure this out by thinking of the function for cos theta. It's like this. Now, let's follow the same process. If cos, if, if the angle was 60 degrees and now we half it to maybe 30 degrees, we can clearly see that the value for cos theta increases. So if I decrease theta, cos theta increases. And if cos theta increases, it means that fx increases. So that means the net horizontal force will increase. So that leaves us with option B. Let's look at the next one, question 1.4. A girl of mass m and a boy of mass 2m face each other while standing at rest on roller skates, as shown in the diagram below. The girl pushes the boy to the right with a force of f. Ignore all frictional effects. If the girl accelerates to the left at x meters per second squared, what will be the magnitude of the acceleration of the boy immediately after they separate? So we, we need to draw free body diagrams for both of them. So we have the girl and then the boy. Now, remember when you're drawing a free body diagram, you are drawing the forces that act on the object. So the forces acting on the girl will be the normal force, the force of gravity, and then the force applied. You could call this the force of the boy on the girl. Now, if, for, so, and likewise, if I draw the forces acting on the boy, I have the normal force, I have the force of gravity, and the girl is pushing him to the right, so that's the force applied. Now we know from Newton's third law that both of these forces are equal to each other. So this force applied and this force applied are equal to each other. Now the next step would be to do Newton's second law, so F net equals MA, so for the girl and for the boy. So F net equals MA. And since the only force acting on the girl is the force applied, Fa is equal to m times x, since they gave us the acceleration as x. Now, the same thing will apply for the boy. So F net equal ma. Now, also force applied equals, the mass of the boy is 2m, and we don't know the acceleration, so we can leave it at a. Now, since we know that both of the force applies are the same from Newton's third law, we can equate them. So we can say that Fa equals Fa, m times x equals 2m times a. Now since we want a, we can divide both sides by 2m. The 2m will cancel. You have a equals a half x. So the acceleration of the boy is going to be b. And the last one, we have a man of mass 95 kilograms stand on a, stands on a bottom scale in a stationary lift. The scale registers a reading of 931 newtons. Which one of the following readings on the scale is possible if the lift now moves upward? at a constant acceleration. So again, we can start by drawing a free body diagram. The two forces acting on the man are the force of gravity and the normal force. Now, we must understand that the reading on the scale is dependent on the normal force. So if we had to draw, um, if we had to use Newton's second law, F net equal ma, since the since the, um, since the lift is moving upward, we'll choose up as positive. So we'd have Fn minus Fg equals Ma. Now, since we want the reading on the scale, we take Fn, sorry, we take Fg over. So Fn is going to equal to Ma plus Fg. Now we can interpret this in the following way. The reading on the scale is now going to increase since we are adding on the acceleration of the, um, since we are adding on the acceleration of the, for the product of the product of the mass and the acceleration 
of the um, the lift. Okay, so the answer here would be D.